Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Maz back again today with another video for you guys. Today is going to be my first attempt, and I'm probably going to look like a fool on camera. Um, we're going to be putting a 1.9 wheel into a 1.7 RC four-wheel drive tire. These are the Boom Racing Crate Classics 8-hole. So we're going to try to get these on today. They just have stock foams inside of them so we're just going to try that for the day probably going to get some softer dual stages or something like that um, so let's get this out of the way here and we'll take this wheel and i do not recommend using a hex driver on a screw or on an electric screwdriver on wheels so do as i say not as i do one of them things like your parents used to tell you back in the day you know before you went and did it any damn way made yourself look like a damn fool so taking it apart don't mind using that obviously going back together we're definitely not going to use that we're going to use what i have on standby which is um a two millimeter hand uh hex driver you know by hand so Simple as that, the wheel comes apart. We have our back ring, we have our beadlock ring, and we have the wheel face. So with the Goodyear MTRs, I know that there isn't, you know, kind of a thing out there where they, the tread's directional, but this doesn't always match or vice versa. I'm not sure exactly, I'll have to wait till I get them all together. But I know this one, I want it on the passenger side, so it's gonna to turn to the right. So we're gonna have it this way. First thing we're gonna do is push, and this is a 1.7 foam, so this is probably gonna be snug, but we're gonna get, I say we're gonna get it. We're gonna to try to get that ring inside that tire. Like I said, I might look like a full-blown idiot, which, I mean, hey, let's be real. When don't I look like a full-blown idiot? But we're going to get those in there, and you're going to kind of get them. You're going to see how the bead and that foam is kind of overlapping. You want to kind of manipulate that foam to get it out of the way of that ring. You're going to, but there's also going to be work done while we're putting the wheel itself on, but you're mainly just trying to work in there and get all that foam and that ring centered. So you can see there, we're pretty much centered up. There's no white showing on that side. We still have quite a bit on this side and we may have to put one side in first before we get both of these done, but we're just pulling and squeezing. Just trying to get that down as much as we can. Some more down at the bottom. So a little bit there, looks like we're pretty good. Yep, so we got the inner ring in there. It's all in there, ready to roll. This is the aluminum rings that come with the broom, boom racing. So I believe first thing we're gonna do is try to get the wheel face into the wheel now. Obviously this is gonna be tight due to the fact that it's a 1.7 and this is a 1.9. So your outer diameter on this is bigger than the wheel, it's, or bigger than the tire bead itself. So we'll start to, you kind of just want to get it started on one side and then you're going to start pulling away. You're going to start working that tire or that wheel face around that tire and through your beadlock ring on the inside. So I'm not sure how these are going to look stretched, but it's my first time doing it. And as you're going through it, you're wanting to pull this bead. You can see me kind of pull it. Um, just trying to get that pulled out to get it up to the top of the wheel. So keep doing that until we feel like we're good. So looks like... And then we're gonna go around and just double check that our bead is consistent 
all the way around. I'm not sure if we're all the way there yet. Looks like it's got to squeeze down quite a bit. So at this point, we're going to go to the back and you're going to kind of do the same thing with the back. You're going to try to get that bead. You know, you don't want that foam in there, but you're going to find your holes. And so we'll leave one up at the top and we'll start this one. And it's the same process. We're going to put one side in with our other hand. We're going to pull that bead. See, it don't want this one has a very slim lip. So this one may be tougher than most. And like I said, this is my first time. So if I'm doing it wrong. Tell me what a dumb redneck I am down in the comments. You know, uh, you can't hurt my feelings. Uh, thick skin, you know, but these are super tight. And I may have to come off camera to do this. Yeah, because you kind of have to use both hands full fledged and you kind of got to squeeze down and use both hands at the same time. Um, you're just trying to get that bead up on the flat surface of that lip of the wheel. Once you do that, then you can start worrying about working it into the aluminum bead of the inner ring. It looks like we're close. So we're going to keep working this around. Like I said, we're trying to keep the front back where, or the front to where it was. We're trying to keep the back lined up as much as possible. So you're continuously trying to manipulate that tire. You don't want to pull too far because you don't want it to come out of the aluminum in the wheel, you know, the inner ring, but you want to get it down where it's pretty close and you can see down in there where you don't have it yet. So like that right there, that's in there. And looks like we're working our way around. We're still getting that bead in there. Like I said, with wheels and tires, you gotta take your time so I apologize that this is taking so long, but we're gonna to try to get one of our screws started at least so we can kind of have a third hand here. We'll see if we can get one down in there and then we'll kind of start going around and seeing if we're in where we need to be. So I know I'm, I know I'm not on camera, yeah, these are plenty long. So what I'm going to do is actually put four of these in to keep that ring where it's supposed to be. Just a little bit off there. We got to come over. There we go. We're not, we're not tightening them down yet. We are just getting some in there so we don't have to worry about our hands holding the ring and everything else like i said this is literally my first time ever trying it and i'm doing it on camera so don't know how to work out but you know if i fail we'll fail together you know it's not a big deal if you're not failing you're not learning you know every failure is a learning experience as well so looks like to me we have that bead pretty well you can kind of i don't know if you can see it but i can down in that groove you can see the bead and it is pretty well in that tire i think as close as i'm gonna be able to get it and it feels pretty free that's the other thing i'm trying is i can pretty much squeeze that whole bead with my hands so just double checking that this side is fine. So we'll slowly put, or we'll go ahead and put the other four screws in as well. These are some beautiful looking wheels. They did a great job with these wheels. I know it's not the fanciest wheel, but hey, it takes me back to the, you know, my teenage, early twenties, you know, makes me feel nostalgic. 
I don't know if that matters, but to me it does. So one more screw. Kind of want to make sure that you push down on them. If they've been screwed down a little bit, you don't want that going in at an angle. You want to make sure all your screws are started and free. And then we're kind of just working our way around. And I'm not wanting to feel really anything, try to force these are screwing in very easily. Um, it feels like the bead is, and I can see the bead down in there, but just randomly go around in like a similar to a star pattern and make sure you're getting the screws snug down evenly. Like I said, I use a hand driver for all this and yeah, this closing up pretty, pretty easily. And we're not, I'm not going to get it all the way. I want to leave a little gap there. So we're going to back it out just a little bit. Back these out that are tight just a little bit. This guy here, this one's real tight. So we're going to back it out. And this is where I'm going to do my final check. And I'm probably leaving a 16th, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit more, very little. I call it a 16th. So this is where we'll go around and we'll kind of, you don't want to pull away from it because you don't want to pull that bead out. But if that bead is consistent all the way around where when you pull it, you see that little indentation from where the bead starts you can about pretty well plan on that it's not crammed down in there. And also your other, where I'm telling you like right now, I can even feel it by squeezing it by hand. I can feel it drop all the way the rest of the way. So we're up around that lip and inside the aluminum ring inside to clamp that bead. But like I said, all the way around, just check it, double check it. And on the front side as well, you definitely want to check. You don't want it bound up. You don't want it to make the sidewall look all weird. So, sorry for dragging this out, but I just want to show y'all, because like I said, this is from a point of view of a complete novice. I know nothing about mounting a 1.7 on a one one nine. So, I just figure, hey, people do it, so why can't I do it? And I wanted to have the widest option of the Goodyear MTR, so... I had to go with a 1.7. It was weird that the 1.9 was actually a few millimeters narrower, two or three millimeters narrower than the 1.7. So that's what we did. Now I got two locked down. And as you can see, just by doing that, it locked the whole bead. So it went in there that easy. There's not a bunch of stuff. I can guarantee you there's nothing bound up in there. If so, this is aluminum. I'm sure it would still probably have a little flex to it if you had a bunch of rubber bound up and couldn't get, you know, the bead all the way set in. So we'll get all these, get all these tight. We're kind of going around in a star pattern here. We rock with them MIPs. That's the most comfortable for me. Man, I'm, I'm going to dig these, I believe. There is a downfall to something I've already done on the truck. That I have a feeling, like I said, those portal weights, I know they're not going to clear these wheels. So we're going to have to back up and punt on that. But that's for another video. And you're not trying, these are aluminum wheels, you know, we're not trying to uh, go get our one inch impact gun and put, you know, 42 Ugga Duggas on this thing. You know, we're just trying to get it in there and snug down to where it's bottomed out. Once you get to that point, you can stop. And I'm going around a couple times just to do a final check that the, all the screws are snug. And I'm not even grabbing this with my whole hand. I'm literally grabbing it with three fingers. This is a three finger, you know? Some of them bigger than others, you know? 
screws that are, that is. So, man, that's nostalgic for me. Even though this tread pattern's all changed a little bit, this still gives me the, the side tread and the wheel combo. Man, that takes me back to like 2002. But looks like it's got a little bit of a, you know, bulge on the side. Ooh, bulge, I don't know if that's a good word for it. But it protrudes a little bit on both sides. But as I can remember, that's about as close as you get to the wheel and tire combo I had on my Cherokee. Man, that's a good setup. I like that. So set those there. And like I said, guys, this is legit. Never tried to put this together before. Just went straight into it. And, you know, trial by fire. If somebody else has done it, you know, you obviously can do it yourself. But once you're done, you will want to go back around and just double check. And, man, these are locked in. You can feel it when you go to pull on them. But these are locked in nice. You're really only stretching it two tenths of an inch. So 200 thousandths, you're under a quarter inch that you're, it's three sixteenths to a quarter inch that you're doing it. But you always wanna double check that that bead is right there at the edge. You can see it when I lift it. You can see where that bead drops down in there and starts, but we're good all the way around. Um, if I went to pull on this and it was bad, more than likely it's going to pull out of there and stay out and you're going to have it looking all jacked up and you're going to know something's wrong. But as easy as these went together, we got it all beat it up. Everything works great. So we'll take, that's our finished product for our wheel and tire combo. I think they look great. Tell me in the comments what y'all guys think. I'm not going to bore you with putting the other three together. You saw how quick I could do it on camera. I assume it'll be just as easy off camera so in the comments tell me what you think of the wheel and tire combo if i did you know a good job throwing them together if i did something completely ass backwards that i shouldn't have done and like always guys like and subscribe to the channel turn that notification bell on so you're notified every time i do a video and until next time guys y'all have a good one